risen today, our triumphant holy day, who did once upon the cross suffer to redeem our is risen today. Sing Alleluia, Alleluia. Lift your voices in praise. Alleluia. Sing we to our God above. Praise eternal Son and Holy Ghost, He is risen just as He said He would. Christ is risen today. Sing Alleluia, Alleluia. Lift your voices in In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, sisters and brothers, to the fourth Sunday of Easter. In our second reading today, we will hear from the letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us. God loves us so much. And sometimes we forget that. So as we begin our celebration, we recall the time when we have failed to recognize that we are God's beloved children. Through the sprinkling of the water, we ask God to have mercy on us and we renew our commitment that we say on our baptism. So let us now pray for the blessing of the water. Blessed are you, Lord, all-powerful God. We ask that you bless this water who in Christ, the living water of salvation, blessed and transformed us. Grant that when we are sprinkled with this water or make use of it, we will be refreshed inwardly by the power of the Holy Spirit and continue to walk in the new life we received at baptism. We ask this through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter said, Rulers of the people and elders, if you are questioning us today about an act of kindness to a cripple and asking us how he was healed, then I'm glad to tell you all and would indeed be glad to tell the whole people of Israel that it was by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, the one you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. By this name and by no other, that this man is able to stand up perfectly healthy here in your presence today. This is the stone rejected by you, the builders, but which has proved to be the keystone. For of all the names in the world given to men, this is the only one by which we can be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us. 
by letting us be called God's children. And that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore, it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God. But what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord jesus said i am the good shepherd the good shepherd is one who lays down his life for his sheep the hired man since he is not the shepherd, and the sheep do not belong to him, abandons the sheep and runs away as soon as he sees a wolf coming. And then the wolf attacks and scatters the sheep. This is because he is only a hired man and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep. And there are other sheep I have, there are other sheep I have that are not of this fold, and these I have to lead as well. They too will listen to my voice, and there will be only one flock and one shepherd. The Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down for my own free will. And as it is in my power to lay it down, so it is in my power to take it up again. And this is the command I have been given by my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Think of the love the Father has lavished on us. When I'm reflecting about God's love in my life, the easiest way is to think on the, my parents, the love of my parents, especially my mom. But last night, I attended the session, The Praying with Art. Yesterday, we have a reflection where an artist shared her journey through art, praying with art. And then in this session, I came to realize something that I never thought of. Because through her art, through her painting, she poured out her feeling, her deepest emotion, her desires. And when, in one of her pieces, she painted an episode in her life when she felt she was losing her daughter. She said, I didn't know her anymore. It seems that she ran away. When I heard that, it is kind of true because there was a point in my life when I felt that my mom doesn't understand me anymore. I need to search for my own. There's something that 
something bigger that I was looking for. And this morning, I celebrated a wedding. And in their reflection, they said that, oh, he understood, he understands me. And then she understands me, she accepts me as who I am. But I think from married couple, I hear also that the reality, that there's a point in our life. Sometimes we, we think that, does she even love me? Does he know what I want in my life between the married couple? So there's always some longing in our life. We need to feel loved more. We want more in our life. And I think our readings, our gospel tells us the answer. When Jesus say, I know my own and my own knows me. Because God knows who we are through and through and he loves us that he lay down his life for us. Even when we don't know ourselves. That's the struggle that we have in our life. Sometimes we don't know who we are. We don't know what we want. We don't know how we want to be loved. But God is the one who knows us. Today, I would like to invite someone on the Good Shepherd Sunday to tell his story on how he recognized the love that God has for him. And in his response, he would like to imitate that love. He would like to imitate that love that he received, that he wants to be the shepherd as well. So sisters and brothers, I would like to ask Brother Timothy to share his testimony of God's love in his life. So good evening, brothers and sisters. My name is Timothy, and I'm a seminarian attached to this parish for the weekends of this year. I'm in my eighth year, so no, I'm not one of the servers. I know many of you think I'm one of the servers. I'm very happy to be here to share my story of love with the Lord with you. And so it begins, right, about, I remember this moment 10 years ago. I was working as a lawyer, litigation lawyer in a medium-sized law firm. And here I was on a boring afternoon in my little office, little cubicle, typing away, drafting some submissions. And suddenly I receive a phone call. I see, Alamak, it's one of the partners. So I thought, oh, I'm in trouble. Did I do something wrong? I pick up the phone and I answer the call. And this hurried voice speaks to me and says, Hey Tim, come to meeting room one now. And I'm like, oh my, what is going on? Is there some big case that's coming up? Or did I really do something so bad that he needs to see me? So of course, with fear and trembling in my heart, I went to the meeting room. And as I opened the room, the door to the room, I just saw this lady sitting there looking very down. And the partner was sitting next to her. And mind you, this partner was a Hindu. And he turned to me and said, Tim, this client is Catholic and she is going to be pleading guilty tomorrow for a crime that she did. She's very afraid. Can you pray for her? So of course, this partner knew that I was Catholic, a practicing Catholic. And somehow he felt that I could provide some solace to this lady and of course, we prayed together. I can't remember what I said. But when I think of that incident, I recall and I'm filled with gratitude that the Lord allowed me to experience what it felt to be like a good shepherd at the workplace. I'm not sure how many of you, you know, would agree, but sometimes the workplace feels like a very secular environment. We feel, or at least I felt out of depth, Actually, I really struggled at work to find meaning, to find purpose. And many times I felt like a hired hand that, you know, I was just looking out for my own interests. I was just trying to survive, get to the weekend. But it was moments like these that really reminded me of this deep desire that began actually even before I started working as a lawyer. And so that was just the first part, just to segue into the beginnings of my call. And so, for most of you, would you ask me, brother, brother, why do you want to become a priest? And I will take a line from the gospel today. Jesus says, I lay my life down of my own free will. It is a choice. A choice to respond to the call of God. It is my choice now. It has been a long journey to get here. But it was not always my choice. It was really a movement from fear into freedom. And so how did it all begin? 
Of course, I am a cradle Catholic. Just an ordinary boy. I went through Catholic schools. I got confirmed. I stayed in church, joined a youth community. But yet, there was really nothing really special about this relationship I had with God, or even if there was really a live relationship at all. But all this changed for me after my national service. I had some free time before university, and I decided to go foolishly, or maybe providentially, to this six-week discipleship school, which is called the School of Witness. It carries on until today. Maybe some of you know family members who have gone. And it was there that I encountered the Lord very deeply, not so much knowing with my head that He loved me, which we say all the time. But it was there that I encountered Jesus Christ as my beloved, that He knew me, that He wanted me to love Him, and I felt completely seen and safe. I wonder how many of us have that experience with the Lord where I can truly be with Him, safe and secure. And of course, that is my experience of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And as I reflect back, I realize, you know, for a lot of my life, I am trying to be like the hired hand. I'm trying to earn God's love. All my accolades, I did well in school. My service in church, I was in leadership. All that was really for me to try to prove my worth to God that I am worth loving, that I am good enough. But at this point, at the School of Witness, I, for the first time, recognized and truly accepted that I'm loved by God as I am. Nothing I can do will make Him love me more. Nothing I can do will make Him love me less. In the Gospel, we hear two marks of the Good Shepherd. And the first is this, as Fry Robin shared, I know my own and my own know me. After School of Witness, it was my journey of coming to know the heart of Jesus Christ. So what happens when you fall in love? When you fall in love, you begin to ask your beloved, what will make you happy? Right? For those of us who are attached, we will always ask our partners, what do you want to do? What do you want to eat? And so for me, after the School of Witness, I began to, for the first time again, pray and ask, God, what is your will for me in my life? Previously, it was just about doing good, right? Good grades, good schools, leadership positions, get a good job. But now I began to ask, and lo and behold, God answered. As I continue to go for masses after the School of Witness, I would begin to realize this small but slight stirring in my heart as I sat in the pews. I would think to myself as the priest is preaching, wow, what would, it, what would I say if I were preaching this homily? As I saw the priest lay his hands over the bread and wine and proclaim the words of consecration, I would think to myself, how would it feel like to say these words? What would it feel like to stand and celebrate the Mass? Even at confession, while the priest is giving me the absolution, I'm thinking to myself, wow, what would it feel like to say these words to someone? And that really scared me. I've never had such feelings before, such desires stirring my heart. And you know, I was a server for many, many years, but all the time beside the altar, on the sanctuary, I never had these feelings. But now when I asked the Lord, what is your plan for me? He began to shake things up. And even when the parish would pray for vocations, wow, my heart, boom, 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 boom. I can hear, wow, is it me? So a great fear overcame me. The second characteristic of the Good Shepherd that we see in the Gospel is this. And I lay down my life for my sheep. A sacrifice, a going beyond what is normal, going beyond what is mere responsibility, an act of self-gift. And so for me, discovering the call to the priesthood was learning that actually this is something that I want to do with my life. But before that, I got attached. 
right? So amidst all this spiritual awakening, I very, maybe in hindsight foolishly, uh, got attached to a girl in my parish. And we had a pretty stable relationship. And we were growing and, you know, people were looking at us and say, wow, this couple not bad, huh? like quite star couple in the parish. But yet, you know, deep in my heart, there was a restlessness that I thought would go away initially. But as the relationship progressed, it not just continued, but deepened. It's a restlessness that spurred me to think, hey, is this all that there is to life? At least for me, nothing against marriage is a beautiful vocation. But for me, I felt this sense that I want to love more people. I cannot just love one person exclusively. I want to love and give of my life to as many people as I can. And at the time, I was in university, and everyone knew me as this guy who had a special interest in Catholics. If I found out you're a Catholic on campus, I would like, wow, suddenly be interested in you and like, talk to you. And I, I hardly spent time in school. Right? I would go there just for studies, but after that, I would go to church. And it was this time that I really began to be in touch with this deep desire to be present, to be available, to really be the face of Christ to others. And so, after a long time of prayer, of spiritual direction, it came to a point where I had to be honest with myself. Someone challenged me, actually. This person said, why not break up? You are dealing and dallying. You know, two years have passed. You are still confused. Your girlfriend is ready to move on, but you are not. And that really challenged me to be serious. I had to ask myself, actually, how much do I feel called to the priesthood? At that point, when I was honest and authentic myself, I realized, actually, it felt like 60% called. Right? My heart was so restless and in so much turmoil that finally I had to pluck up my courage. I prayed for a week and I finally decided to end the relationship. And so that was my first, or not first, but one of the, I would think, sacrifices along the way to give up something that I treasured. But with that came a deep sense of peace, even though there was still sorrow. Deep sense of peace that, yes, now I can be honest with myself. I can be honest with the people around me, my family. I can be honest with God. I am living the life that God calls me to. I can finally embrace with a deep joy just this sense that God may be calling me to the priesthood. And there was a deep freedom. And so, from then on, it was really about falling deeper in love with the priesthood. And not only the priesthood as a vocation, but with the people of God, you. You know, I always reflect that how I experience God's love for me is not just in prayer and the sacraments, but in my interactions with all of you, with the people of God in every parish, every organization I visit, every home I'm in. You are my joy. Because the shepherd knows his sheep and he wants his sheep to know him. And it's your faith which gives me strength, your sharings, your sorrows which pierce my heart, but also give me a deep sense of purpose, mission, closeness and intimacy. And so, I in my eighth year of formation, my final year. And you know, there's a danger to be complacent. Each year, I'm just going through, I can say the right things, I can choose to do the right things without a serious change of heart. And that is the daily sacrifice of the shepherd as well. Each morning when I wake up at 6 a.m. to do my morning prayers, I need to choose again. To choose the love of the Lord. To choose to love the people that belong to this God. And so, you know, you may think, wow, this young man gave up so much to be where he is today. 
wow, these young men, so gifted, so talented. But our first reading gives us the central message for today. In the first reading, Peter and John say, no, it's not about us, it's not about our ability, it's not about our goodness, that this man, this cripple, has been healed. It is by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, by this name and by no other, that this man is able to stand up perfectly healthy here in your presence today. And it's by this name that I stand here today, proclaiming that, yes, the priesthood is a great gift that I feel that he's calling me to. The priesthood is a gift to the people of God, not just here, but throughout the world. Jesus is that good shepherd. And I am but a sheep, but I am also a shepherd trying to be good, trying to imitate his love for the people of God, you. So dear parents, first lesson, if you think lawyer or other high-paying job is the key to life, this is the testimony. It is not. We desire something more in our life. We desire to be loved. We desire to be loved to the fullest. And God's love is the answer because God's love, as in Brother Timothy's life, gives you freedom, that leaves you feeling fulfilled and gives you a sense of purpose and mission in life. So we pray together that each of us, that was his story, but each of us has our own personal story with God. We ask God to make it clear to us and we open our hearts that we may listen to the voice of the shepherd. We understand what God is saying to us and in our response, freely choose to love and obey God. May God's peace be with all of us. Let us now rise and we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Christ, the Good Shepherd, we come to you with trust bringing our prayers and petitions for our needs. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, when, that when faced with persecution, we will still offer the message of hope through salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, that God will raise up good shepherds in our midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom God is calling to serve him in the priesthood and religious life, that they sense the call with greater clarity and discernment and have the courage to respond generously. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the neophytes, that they may know resilience in the face of challenges while living out their ever-deepening faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of mentoring and companionship in life, that caregivers, neighbors, Friends and family persevere in shepherding and guiding them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
good and loving shepherd, help us to be devoted to you as you are to us. Help us also to keep each other within the flock. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you. And eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died 
in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Francis, St. Clair, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God.
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe you are really here in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world, and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this time, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now, as I do when I actually receive you in Holy Communion. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures to sheep you, the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God.